To crochet a traditional hot pad using worsted weight yarn, I need to crochet hook K. It's pretty simple. You're just going to begin with a beginning chain. Right here I have 36 beginning chains. And you're just going to work a row of single crochets starting in the second chain from your hook. And just work in that top. It's actually considered the back loop right there. Just work right in that and work a row of single crochets all the way to your beginning chain. Okay, I'm at the end of the row and I have one chain left. Work your single crochet in that last chain. Now to work the hot pad, we're gonna be working in rounds. So you're just gonna rotate the beginning chain and begin by working a single crochet now in the opposite loop of the beginning chain. So there's one, just grab that other chain there. And after I've worked about three or four chains, I like to pull this because it's a little bit loose that first one is. Just pinch that with your hand and pull that beginning thread. And that just tightens that up a little bit. Okay, and then continue working the row of single crochets to the end. Okay, once again, I have one chain left. Complete that last single crochet in there. And now you have, this is the diagonal angle of your hot pad. We are gonna work in continuous rows, so we're not gonna join with a slip stitch in the top of that beginning chain. Instead, we're just going to work our next single crochet right into that stitch and just keep working all the way around your prior row to create the hot pad. As you do this, as you can see right here, this is already folded over, creating the corner, and as you work, that will just continue to come down. I'll show you some progress photos, and then we'll catch up at the end. Okay, so this is what your hot pad's gonna look like at about row five. So we've completed row five rows in the round. And as you can see, the corners are starting to fold in. And the whole point in the hot pad is to get these corners to kind of come together and line up. Making a hot pad in a solid color is wonderful, but sometimes you might wanna add some color to it. Um, and it's pretty simple to add stripes. If you're going to add stripes, I do recommend adding them at the seam. So this is just kind of a visual, um, a visual way to make them, or make those color changes, is just by folding your, your corner down and seeing where that seam lines up. And then in the last stitch before, the, before it's gonna turn and work along the edge is where you're gonna wanna do your color change. So I already completed that stitch, so I'm actually gonna pull out that last one because we'll work that as a color change. So you're gonna insert your hook pull up a loop, and then you're gonna complete that stitch with the new color. So we're gonna to switch to white at this point. Pull that up, and I just like to bury my yarns as I crochet. So we're just gonna go into that next stitch there and bury that beginning piece of yarn right here. And after you work that first stitch, you might wanna kinda of pull that tight and pull the green yarn a little bit tighter just to give it a little bit of a cleaner look and then you have your color change. Um, I'm gonna work one row and kind of show you guys how that looks. Okay, so we just completed one row. Um, to make the color change look the best, if you're only gonna do one row of your contrasting color of white, you're gonna wanna work an extra row of white. Otherwise, you're gonna see the green kind of slide through here and you don't want that. So go ahead and work one more white, and this will also, by working this extra stitch of white, it will also make the, the color change continue on the seam again. So as you can see, just that working that color stitch, that's not a very good example right there. But as you pull those colors tighter, it will look much cleaner. And I'll show you on my completed one what that seam looks like. So if you lay this down flat again, that color change occurred right at that seam again and you won't really see it there will be a little jog in the uh, color change but you won't see it because it is on that seam right there
So, all right, we're gonna come back in just a few minutes uh, when the hot pad is almost completed. Okay, our hot pad is completed, and as you can see, I've done multiple color change rows, and then um, some sections of solid rows as well. Um, you're gonna know that you have completed enough rows when, when you lay your hot pad down and these seams line up nicely right here. If there is a gap between them, continue working another row until they do lay nicely. If they are, if they can't get, get them to lay down and they're like puckered up like this, it means you've worked too many rows and you should maybe uh, take one of those rows out. So again, these are laying nice and flat so we're ready to make our seam. I wanted to show you the color change rows. So as you can see, my color changes. There is a jog in that, um, but you cannot see it because it is right along the edge. So if you're looking at the hot pad from this direction, you don't really see that jog. And if you look at it from this side, you don't see the jog because it is right there on the edge. So it's nearly invisible. No one's going to notice that. So to sew up the seam of the hot pad, I like to do the mattress stitch just because it kind of it hides it and it lays nice and flat. So to work the mattress stitch, I just come to the edge and I'm working from the inside out. I'm going to put my needle through the top of that last stitch right there, pull it all the way through, and then I'm going to go through the top of the stitch on the opposite side and pull that through. Okay, and then I'm going to go into the next one working from the bottom, from the inside out. And then on the next one, working from the inside out. Inside out, going to the inside and out. And I'll do this a little bit, a couple of them, just to kind of show you guys what they look like. After you do about six or seven stitches, as you can see, they're very loose there. Just kind of, I like to place my thumb on it and that just ensures that everything's gonna lay nice and flat. And then pull this yarn nice and tight and it's just gonna pull that down nicely. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna show you guys here. Going from the inside out, work under both loops at the top of that stitch and then come down here and go from the inside out. From the inside out. the inside out. We'll do two more and then we'll pull that tight. And you're going to continue working the mattress stitch. See how nice that stitch lays? You're going to continue with this all the way across to the end and then you're going to secure it with a knot and then weave in all your ends. Once your hot pad is completed, we're going to come back. We're going to make, actually make a coordinating one. Come back with two hot pads and a scrubby and we'll put together a little package. Again, making the scrubby, we're going to use Red Heart Scrubby Yarn, which already has these natural built-in scrubby pieces on it. We're going to begin with a slip or a slip knot, and we're going to start with the beginning chain two. So there's one, two, and now you're going to work, and this is kind of hard to see, so I'll do my best to show you. You're going to work eight half double crochets in this beginning chain. There's one, and this yarn is a little bit trickier to work with, so you're just going to have to be patient. Two, seven, and after our eighth one, we want to, see how there's a little bit of a hole there in the center? That's perfectly fine, you can kind of see it in there, but I like to close that up, so I just kind of put my thumbs on it and hold that, pinch it lightly. And then I take that beginning strand of yarn and just pull, and that will tighten that up a little bit. It's a little trickier with the scrubby yarn, but see now there's no hole in there. Now we're going to join with the slip stitch in the top of that first half double crochet to create our first round. Okay, and again, I know it's tricky to see with the scrubby yarn, but it's worked the same as a traditional working in the rounds. I began with a chain one. Now we're going to work two half double crochets in each stitch around. Okay, 
At the end of the row, I'm going to begin or join with a slip stitch in that top of that first half double crochet again. So that's two rows of half double crochets. For our third row, we're going to do the same traditional uh, working in the round. So you're going to begin with a chain one, two half double crochets in the first stitch. There's one, and then a second one in that same stitch, and then a half double crochet in the next stitch. Sometimes those stitches are a little tricky to find, so you just got to be kind of, as you work, you kind of get a feel for where those stitches belong. So then again, we're going to repeat that around to create that round. Now, if this is your first round or first circle piece, you're going to fasten off and repeat. I've already done that, so higher is my first piece. On your second piece, do not fasten off. Leave this, leave your beginning strand on and chain one to begin round four. Now for round four, we're gonna take both of the circle pieces and crochet them together. So turn this one so that the back side is facing the back side. Hold them together and we chained one and we're going to work through the top. We're gonna to work two half double crochets in the first stitch. So we're gonna insert our hook through the, the top piece and then through the stitch of the bottom piece and complete our two half double crochets. So there's one. Again, work through both pieces. Two. Now we're gonna do a half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Now, sometimes it's easier if you just work through the top one and then kind of turn it and look and work through the bottom one. Okay, and then again. Sometimes it works out fine, other times it's easier because it is difficult to see you using this yarn to kind of separate it and go around. Okay, so now I've completed all of round four and I'm just gonna join with a slip stitch in the top of the beginning half double crochet. Weave some yarn. And fasten off. Just pull this through to make kind of a knot. And then it is a little bit tricky, but go ahead and thread your yarn needle through here and weave your yarn through the end. I do recommend a needle with a large uh, eye on it because like I said, this is a little trickier to thread through. And when I come back, I'll show you how to assemble the entire gift package. Okay, so I have my two coordinating hot pads. They're both, I made one with thick stripes and one with thin stripes. And I have completed my scrubby. These make a wonderful gift um, to a newlywed, to, as a housewarming gift, uh, birthday, Mother's Day, um, teacher gifts, anything like that, or for yourself. However, if you were gonna give them as a Christmas gift, I have created this cute little printable. It says, wishing you a warm and toasty Christmas and a scrubtacular new year. I'm gonna show you how I put these together as a little gift for my neighbors. Um, and it's pretty easy. I just made two coordinating hot pads. I, I placed the smaller one on top. They are really close to the same size, but I think this one's just a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to place the scrubby just a little bit to the top of one of the corners. And then you're going to take your little principle and put it so that it is centered. I place the scrubby up a little bit higher so you can actually see it. Then I'm just going to take some yarn and I'm going to do red just to make it a little bit more Christmassy. And I am just going to bring my yarn straight down all the way through the scrubby and through both hot pads and turn it over and pull that all the way through. And then we're gonna go right back through on the other side, going back through everything. There it is, hang on here. We're gonna pull that up and then, then thread it through the printable. So, take my needle off and I'm just gonna make these more even and tie a simple little bow in the center. And these printables are available on my blog and that link is in the comments below or in the description below. So you can just go straight to my blog and print it off. 
and there is your cute little Christmas gift. And again, I gave these to, out to my neighbors, to my kids as teachers um, for gifts this year. And they're super cute, super nice, usable gifts. So again, that's two hot pads and a scrubby. And I'm wishing you a warm and toasty Christmas and a scrubtacular New Year. Thanks for watching.